the ancient Tibetans believed that a person is made up of many selves and that the aim of life is to become conscious of these selves so as to master them and not be mastered by them. In the modern age, we find ourselves in a world of personas, not personalities, where the image too often doesn't correspond with the reality of the person or the situation. We have not mastered ourselves. We have mastered the art of deception. Jared pressed pause on the YouTube audiobook on ancient Tibetan psychology as this last line struck a chord with him. He found listening to these lectures and audiobooks on ancient wisdom so illuminating, so much so that they had come to replace actual people in his life. Even though the lessons were from so long ago, they still seem to resonate and say a lot about the world we live in today. It was such an effort to get to the real truth of things. He had friends, but wasn't sure if he really knew them. Most of the time spent with friends was more about posturing and bragging than anything real. The art of deception, as explained in the Chinese art of war scriptures from antiquity, was the norm now. If life is war, then everyone must have a shield to protect them from harm. Put your best foot forward. Never let them see you weak. Men don't cry. Jared did see some value in the endless gender-based tropes we had come to take for granted. Still, it all felt too much like a straitjacket with too little wiggle room. Stoicism he'd always seen as a virtue. Ancient Stoics like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius demonstrated the wisdom in such a position. Yet this virtue had been under attack recently in the mainstream media by feminists and progressive psychologists. But Jared had seen his own father and other men like him shoulder the weight of circumstance and not complain to make sure bills were paid and he and his brothers were clothed and fed. There did seem to be a point to it, for how would this have worked out if his dad was highly emotional and continuously immersed in doubts? Perhaps men were meant to mute their emotional life, to facilitate the happiness of their families, their children and their communities. Perhaps this was necessary, and all these well-meaning types were actually upsetting the delicate balance of nature and of the universe. Much had been said lately about the curse of toxic masculinity and the virtues of the new age understanding and sensitive man. For Jared, though, as someone who embodied the latter, he could never find an actual living, breathing woman who would take him seriously. After all his efforts to measure up to this new, ideal man, he would watch resentfully as these same women promoting this idea reverted back to type, seeking out a more patriarchal, practical man who got things done without the inconvenience of emotional expression. Who was he really to put himself above all those men through the ages whose daily actions, often unacknowledged and unrewarded, defined what it meant to protect and provide? Jared felt he wasn't even half the man his dad was. This grated upon him. Like a man trapped between two worlds, belonging completely to neither. What also grated on him was the propensity for people, both men and women, towards pretension, trickery and disguise. Why couldn't people just be honest, be themselves? There always seemed to be some game being played. And as he wasn't really sure what the rules were, he too often was on the losing side. The way that successful people appeared to master this art of being deceptive caused Jared a great deal of anxiety. Did this mean he himself would never be successful? It went against everything his parents had taught him about the value of honesty and integrity. 
this anxiety he felt now pressing against his temples, accompanied by a sickly nausea rising up within him, a dizziness he felt even sitting down, all symptoms of a man ill-equipped to deal with the confusing complexities of such a strange world. He felt the piercing gaze of others on the bus, as if they could see straight through to his soul. Jared pressed play again on the video, bringing the soothing voice back to his ears. The audiobook on Tibetan psychology would work well for now as a security blanket, as long as he focused on the calming voice of the reader and not those apparently examining him from every side, he felt as if no one could hurt him. Jared pressed the bell to get off at the next stop. He got up and walked with a renewed strength, remembering where he was going. Stepping off the bus, he kept his earphones in and the volume up, determined to maintain this force field until he reached his destination. As he walked through the front door, nested discreetly between a news agents and a dry cleaners, Jared felt a sense of calm wash over him. It was safe to turn off his shield now. Mark, who delivered the men's group's sessions, greeted him in the corridor. A manly bear hug followed this, and then Jared was greeted warmly by other members of the group already there, all armed with cups of tea, wagon wheels and custard creams. Khalil put the kettle on and asked how he was while Jared hung up his coat. He dropped a pyramid-shaped tea bag into a Garfield mug he'd got used to using, while he reminisced over last week's group session and the deep and meaningful reflections and conversations they had. Here, the confusion of women didn't matter. Here, it was of no immediate concern that so many people in the real world faked it and didn't do what they really wanted to do or say what they really meant. Mark led the sessions in such a way as to evoke brutal yet refreshing honesty. Jared felt at home, surrounded only by other men, yet as reassuring as being a baby in its mother's arms. Stirring his tea, he walked through to the next room to join the others, sitting in a circle of chairs. A few men were late, but that was okay. There was no rush here. Until they turned up, Jared, Khalil and the others could talk freely about the things that really mattered to men, without the pressure from society to entertain the bravado and the stereotypical brutishness that now passes for masculinity. None of that had any power here. He felt a freedom here in this community of men supporting each other that he would not likely feel again until he came back next week.